Okay, just a few hours away from departure. Stuff's all packed and ready. Well, cat's not going with me, but uh, yeah, those two bags are. So, yeah, what do you think? Stuff's getting real now, huh? So, let's do this. Hey, what is going on guys? Uh, it is Noah and we have something very exciting happening. Um, behind me is the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport and we are picking up a very special guest. I'm sure you all know it's probably in the title, but I don't know how, I think, I think this person's the only one posting it on their YouTube channel. I don't even know what's happening with this video. I was told to film and so I'm filming. Um, but uh, yeah, Alyssa and I are here, um, and we are waiting for a flight to touch down in about 20 minutes, and we have a very special guest that I'm very excited uh, to meet. There he is. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hey. Glad you're here. Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. That last clip that you saw there was supposed to be a split screen, with the other video being the one that I could have sworn I was recording as I was approaching Noah. I mean, you saw me holding my phone up like that, right? But when I was offloading the pictures and videos from my phone after I got back from vacation, that clip was nowhere to be found. So I don't know what happened. I was super excited to finally see Noah in person after all these years, so I probably wasn't thinking straight. I could have sworn I pushed the record button, but obviously I didn't. And I'm still disappointed in myself. Uh, the dual angle thing was my idea. He filmed his part, and I'm the one that screwed it up. So, but anyway... Be that as it may, water under the bridge, you know, um, yes, hashtag YouTuber bromance finally reached its critical mass after all this time, after talking for two years about meeting up either out in his stomping grounds of Oklahoma or up here in Oregon, and after being cooped up for 18 months thanks to the pandemic, nothing was going to stop me from taking this trip. And it was so worth it, I am telling you it was worth every penny, I had the time of my life, cue the dirty dancing song. Eight days in Texas and Oklahoma with Noah and Alyssa and their adorable Australian Shepherd, Tucker. What a sweetheart he is. Without a doubt, this was one of the best vacations I have ever had in my entire life with one of the closest and dearest friends I have ever had in my entire life. And I mean that from right deep down in here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Noah and I met over three years ago after discovering each other's YouTube channels. And we became fast friends. Uh, almost faster friends than any other friend I've made in my life, really. Uh, he is so easy to talk to and so easy to listen to. We've confided and commiserated with each other, laughed and kidded with each other. Without getting too sappy here, he may not be my brother in a biological sense, and I technically may not know what being an older brother is like since I'm the youngest of my siblings, but he is unquestionably my little brother in a spiritual sense, I guess you'd say, and nobody's going to tell me any different, period. But anyway, enough of the introduction. This will be a video highlighting my vacation, minus the record store shopping. With Noah and I both being huge music fans, you had to know that we'd, we'd be doing a whole bunch of that, right? But you will see that stuff in what I'm calling my crawl and haul video, where I'll also show you all the stuff I got, of course. And that video should be coming up within two or three days of when this video drops, so keep an eye out for it. Having said that, though, there are a few music-related things that you will see in this video, but most of it is the miscellaneous sights I saw and things we did in Texas and Oklahoma, so I hope you have as much fun watching this video as I had experiencing it and recording all the vlog stuff, and because I've just been dying to share it all with you. So let's get started. We're together. <laughs> and there's Alyssa, too. We're all together. I know. Time for a beautiful, crazy day. 
On my first full day in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, our first stop was the Fort Worth Water Gardens. This is a four-acre complex of topographical concrete formations accentuated with cascading water. Now, I can only imagine what a great place it must be to relax. In fact, in one of these clips, you'll see a lady sitting down in the bottom of the, I don't know, the canyon formation of the uh, Water Gardens complex. Although it did get warm rather early that day, uh, yes, even with all the water, it didn't do very much to beat the heat. Uh, that was one big reason why we made this our first stop. But yes, it is absolutely gorgeous, and I, I just love the sound and the feel and the mood that flowing water creates. It's just fantastic. I love it. After that, we made a beeline for Forever Young Records. That was the first record store we visited on my trip and the one I was most eager to see. But as I said, we'll go over full details on that in my Crawl and Haul video coming up. But after that, after lunch, we made a stop at the Dallas Holocaust and Human Rights Museum. Now, this is one of the true highlights of my visit. As soon as Noah offered it in a potential list of things to do in Dallas, at least I think it was Noah who first brought it up, I knew that I had to see it. Something inside me just had to visit that place. Now, I already knew the dry historical facts of the Holocaust, as most people do, but what made the biggest impact on me at this museum were the physical artifacts that were recovered from the concentration camps and were on display throughout the exhibit. It was a key part of the whole exhibit, and I was truly and deeply moved by the entire thing. It was just put an entirely different perspective, a personal perspective, on the Holocaust for me. Uh, there were two smaller exhibits in the museum as well. There was one about genocides and how they often start, which was interesting from a sociological and anthropological perspective, I guess you'd say and another exhibit about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And uh, this picture here, this was a what I thought was a rather visually interesting breakdown of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, was actually the only picture I took inside the entire museum, uh, not counting a couple of shots out the windows into the courtyard, some nice views from the, uh, from the windows of the museum. Yeah, it just, for some reason, it just didn't feel right taking any pictures inside the Holocaust exhibit, even though other people did, and they probably wouldn't have minded. Something inside me said it wasn't going to be right. It wouldn't be right to do that, so I avoided doing that. But yes, the Dallas Holocaust and Human Rights Museum was a, a very powerful thing, a very sobering thing to see. Uh, it, it's not something that you want to put on a light agenda. If you, if you, you want to do stuff that keeps you in a light mood, keep that off the list for, for such a day. Uh, but I have, do have to say it was a very fulfilling way to wrap up day one of my stay. It's something, as I said, it was something that I felt I needed to see. And honestly, I think it's something that all Americans should see as well. And uh, yeah, especially the people out there, there are some people in America who like to go fast and loose with describing things as being uh, relating to Nazis or com comparable to Nazism. And yes, this, uh, the, this museum would put those people, it would hopefully shut them up and put uh, things into perspective for them. So yes, uh, very uh, intense thing to see, but a very enlightening thing to see as well. On day two of my stay, we made our way from Dallas-Fort Worth back to Stillwater, Oklahoma, which is where Noah and Alyssa live. And on our way there, we passed through Oklahoma City. Now, all we did there was stop at two record stores, which were very, very nice. And again, you'll see details of those in my Crawl and Haul video. 
I did kind of want to stop at the Oklahoma City Bombing Memorial, uh, but we were running short on time, and also, since we had just done the Dallas Holocaust and Human Rights Museum the day before, that was kind of heavy, so, you know, doing two things like that in consecutive days, uh, I just kind of wasn't in the mood for that. One of these days, I think I'll make my, stop, my way back there, so... On day three, we decided to drive out to Bartlesville for the day. That's Noah and Alyssa's hometown. And they took me on a nice thorough tour of the entire town. Saw a lot of stuff uh, in 3D that I had actually seen in their hometown tour video, which I'll put a link to that in the description so you guys can see a lot of what I saw that day. Uh, the first thing that I really wanted to see uh, close up uh, on that day was Price Tower. That is one of only two existing high-rise buildings designed by renowned architect Frank Lloyd Wright. I wanted to visit it on, on behalf of my brother, who's a big Frank Lloyd Wright fan. Uh, we didn't go up to the top of the tower because I think most of it was closed either for renovations or for other reasons. And they did have a modest gift shop down on the ground floor. Uh, I had hoped to find a little model of the tower to get my brother, but the best thing I found was a frisbee. They didn't have any t-shirts in his size. He, he loves t-shirts, so he didn't have any shirts. They had a couple of mugs, but he, he's not a mug person, so a frisbee it was. There was one more tower that we decided to stop at in Bartlesville. Uh, I'm calling it the Sooner Park Tower. I don't know if that's its official name or not, but it is located within Sooner Park, nice little park area that they have in Bartlesville. It's a very small, compared to the Price Tower, and slightly rickety tower. Yes, yeah, so you get three people go up to the top of that thing. It starts to, to swing and sway a little bit. And uh, we went up to the top to take these pictures, but I stupidly f forgot to take a picture of the tower from the ground. So I'll have to show you to you in this clip of it from Noah's hometown tour video. So there you go. Yes, I, 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 I'm surprised that I got as many pictures and videos as I got and, you know, had the presence of mind to do so. There were a few things that I missed out on, obviously. But anyway, after lunch, a nice lunch at a little Mexican restaurant called Senor Salsa, very good place, uh, we went out to Wool Rock, which is a nature preserve established by Bartlesville oil baron Frank Phillips. It's about 20 miles outside of Bartlesville, and it was a lot of fun, I've got to say. Uh, they had an impressive array of animals on the grounds, from bison to ostriches to zebras and everything in between just about. Yes, as you'll see in this video, we passed a bison who'd gotten out of his little fenced-in area. Not sure if he was supposed to be ro roaming out and about or not. Uh, we had to carefully drive around him or her. And uh, Wooler Rock also has a petting zoo where Noah and Alyssa made a friend or two. As you can see, this, this one goat here loved to have its back scratched. It was it, Every time Noah and Alyssa tried to leave, it just wanted its back scratched some more. It, it was kind of insistent on that, I gotta say. There was also an impressively large museum on the grounds, containing various historical and cultural artifacts. That museum was huge. Uh, five or six exhibit rooms, you know, all connected together, and a nice big gift shop as well. And I had to take a picture of this ox cart. I'm not sure why, but yes, just very few pictures I took inside of any museums, but for some reason, the ox cart was just calling out for a picture to be taken of it. Uh, search me, I don't know why. But yes, the only drawback to our day out there, especially our time out in Wooler Rock, was that it was hot and very humid. Uh, possibly the most humid day during my entire stay out there. So yes, that cut down somewhat on the enjoyment of it all. But still, I gotta say, I had a whole lot of fun out there. Just as much fun as I'd had in all the previous days of my visit. And there was still more fun to come. Road trip. Hi. Hi. As I'm, you see, I am here with Noah and Alyssa. I am uh, almost halfway into the best vacation, probably the best vacation I've ever had in my life. To definitively qual qualify that, I'd have to sit down and think, but I, I, it's, it's pretty safe to say. And uh, yeah, we are headed out to Tulsa today on the first of two Tulsa days, separate days, doing different things. And yeah, we've been to, I flew into Dallas, we had a freaking amazing time in Dallas. Then we drove through Oklahoma City on our way back to Stillwater which is where they live, and yeah, now we're heading into Tulsa to have some fun. We were going to the Woody Guthrie Center um, to see, it's a museum, they've got some, currently have a, a rotating exhibit that's like how music has influenced social change and that kind of thing. Um, visiting Tulsa's Riverside area and Gathering Place, just a big park, it's uh, a really pretty area, my favorite part of Tulsa. Um, and then visiting some filming locations for the Weird Al movie UHF. All his idea. <laughs> a Weird Al pil pilgrimage if ever there was one. So, 
So yeah, we are just going to have a whole bunch of fun today as we have every day thus far and most every day to come in this vacation. So more later. See ya. We decided to spend day four of my stay as the first of two days we had marked out for visiting the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our first stop there was a place that was quite simply called The Gathering Place. It's a big, beautiful, well-designed outdoor recreation area. It has all sorts of kids play spaces, seating and gathering areas, hence its name, The Gathering Place. But again, it was one of the more hot and humid days, so we didn't quite enjoy it as much as we'd have liked to. Uh, yeah, uh, Oklahoma in late July, early August, hot and humid, go figure, huh? But anyway, so yeah, not the best time of year to visit, but uh, I gotta say I was very, very impressed by The Gathering Place. Say cheese. And I had to take this picture here. I found it very curious and funny that one of the entrances to the gathering place was on John Williams Way. Naturally, I thought of my beloved film composer when I saw that sign, but I knew he couldn't be the John Williams in question. I found out later on on the web that he is the founder, this John Williams that the street was named after, is the founder of a big energy company headquartered in Tulsa and also something of a philanthropist. So yeah, you learn something new every day, right? But anyway, uh, nearby the gathering place was a huge, gorgeous park area called the Riverside, aptly named since it runs alongside the Arkansas River. Uh, to get from the gathering place to the riverside, we also had to pass through these two awesome tunnels with all this greenery planted all around them. As you see, this was one of my favorite shots, one of my favorite uh, video clips that I took of my entire visit. I just, for some reason, I just love those tunnels. Beautifully, beautifully designed. And now, at long last, we finally get to the two music-related activities I hinted at at the beginning of this video. The first one, many of you may not know, Weird Al Yankovic's movie UHF was filmed in Tulsa so I could not pass up the opportunity. I had to ask Noah and Alyssa to indulge me by finding and driving by a few of the locations used in the filming of the movie. First off, we saw the building used as the headquarters for Channel 8, Weird Al's nemesis in the movie, which appears to be a now empty office building that at some point between filming in 1988 and the present day was occupied by Hewlett Packard, the computer company, from what I understand. We also went by the building that, in the movie, housed Al's or George's apartment, as well as Cooney's Karate Studio. The building was owned by the Tulsa Pump Company, but I'm not sure if it still is or not. Uh, the front of the building has changed. You can see that there are now roll-up doors on the front of it. But it was still very much recognizable from how it appeared in the movie. The third and final UHF location we went to was actually on our second day in Tulsa, the day of our record store crawl, but I wanted to include it here because we're on the subject. In the movie, it served as Big Edna's Burger World, where George and his friend Bob worked at the beginning of the movie, and I thought it was just a closed-up, unoccupied structure. But the day before we went, we found out online that it does indeed house an in-business restaurant called The Naughty Pig. It's a barbecue and sandwich shop, which incidentally serves a pretty darn good burger. So not only did we get to take a picture or two of it as we went by, it also served as our lunch stop for our second Tulsa day. So killed two birds with one stone, I guess you'd say. The place was quite busy when we were there, as you can kind of see from the dining room photo, and the staff was very, very nice. I took a moment and asked one of the waitresses out of curiosity, and she said that they get about 10 to 15 Weird Al or UHF fans per year who stop by. And when I first heard that, I thought it was kind of a low number. But then when I realized that Tulsa is kind of way out in the middle of not much else, uh, and, you know, so it'd be kind of a weird thing for for there to be other attractions to stop by there. You know, no offense to the city of Tulsa. It's a great city. So then I realized, you know, 10 to 15 people a year is probably not bad. More than one a month. That's That's a pretty decent number, I'd say, right? But anyway, back to our first Tulsa day. After a brief stop in the historic Greenwood District, home of Black Wall Street, where I got to see this gorgeous mural, and they do have a little uh, uh, museum of sorts called their Greenwood Cultural Center, I think it's called, and I wanted to stop there, but we were running short on time. Hopefully I'll make it out there on my next visit to Tulsa. Uh, and by the way, look up 
Tulsa Race Massacre on Wikipedia, if you haven't yet. It's something that everybody should know about, and I didn't know about until, like, last year. Uh, we made our way to the other big attraction of the day, the Woody Guthrie Center. Now, this is a museum dedicated to the life story of folk pioneer and Oklahoma native Woody Guthrie. And it was very fascinating for me because I knew almost nothing about him. Uh, the museum also contained a secondary exhibit about social and political activism in popular music, which was pretty much all inspired by Woody Guthrie himself. Uh, and again, I didn't take very many pictures inside the museum because I always hesitate to take pictures inside museums, I'm not sure why. But I did have to take shots of this board that highlights a handful of socially conscious jazz recordings that I will need to check out very soon. Yes, jazz is not a particularly well-known genre for socially aware content. And incidentally, I do already have the epic by Kamasi Washington, as you saw in a uh, video last year, I think it was. But again, a definite highlight of my entire trip was the Woody Guthrie Center. I loved my time there. They did have a few CDs of Woody Guthrie's music there, but I didn't pick any up. Uh, though I think I may have to seek out some of his music at some point in the near future. But you know something? I have to say, on the whole, I was seriously impressed with the city of Tulsa. With all of its outdoor recreation areas, bike and pedestrian paths, and what looks like a thriving multicultural population and a thriving arts district, it reminded me a lot of northwest cities like Portland. And even the parks and green spaces I saw give the ones in Eugene a run for their money. And incidentally, on a side note, uh, the population of the Eugene Springfield metro area is comparable to the population of Tulsa. I was curious, so I had to look it up online. So there you go. Now, when it came to day five of my stay, we decided that after several consecutive days of sightseeing and fun, it, as, as much fun as it was, it was time to relax, take a little break, stick close to home. So we just stayed in and around Stillwater. One of the few things that we did do that day was Noah and Alyssa took me on a tour of the Oklahoma State University campus. It's the college that they're both attending right now. It was very pretty, I thought, uh, larger than I expected, and I enjoyed the architecture of the buildings and the landscaping as well, some beautiful gardens and some beautiful water features as well. And it was also nice to see uh, in person, see a couple of the buildings that had caught my eye in Noah's Take a Walk videos when he would do his uh, recordings of uh, walking around campus as he was filming those. So, yes. More Tucker. Is Tucker getting tuckered out? <laughs> See what I did there? So, yes, a very, very nice day, a beautiful campus, and it was fun to see it. And the rest of that day was just spent relaxing at home with Noah and Alyssa and Tucker. Can't forget Tucker. Yes, he is, as you can see in these videos, one of the most playful dogs I've ever seen in my life. Uh, loves to play fetch with uh, a frisbee or a ball or whatever you have lying around and, and want to throw for him. Uh, he'll go and fetch it. Uh, that's just him. Uh, yes, I, I really, I'm already missing the heck out of Tucker, and hopefully I'll get to see him again in another six or seven months. And then came day six when Noah and I went back to Tulsa for our record store crawl. But as I said, that and our other record store excursions you will see in my crawl and haul video coming up very, very soon. But to wrap up here, my overall impressions of Oklahoma? Much greener than I thought. Uh, yes, I'm not sure why, but I was expecting it to be mostly brown and bereft of vegetation, but there were shrubs and greenery nearly everywhere I looked. And while the horizon was very flat, as I expected, there were plenty of hills that rolled underneath the highways, and also lakes and such alongside the highways that made the car rides very, very pretty. So yes, a very beautiful state if, uh, you know, don't underestimate the beauty and picturesque nature of Oklahoma. And so that'll do it for my vacay vlog, part one anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. 
Also scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite Hello YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.